Hi farm friends, my name's Georgia from Grow My Goodness here in the beautiful Bay of Plenty, New Zealand. It's been about four months since you've seen me and been up here in the market garden. If you want to know why I haven't been filming, go and check out my previous video that I just uploaded right before this one. I'll put a link here and in the description box down below because we have got a lot to catch up on today. We pretty much skipped a whole season and this has been the most challenging autumn yet. So come for a walk with me around the market garden and I am going to show you why. Let's go. One of the biggest challenges that we've had has been the weather. It has been incredibly rainy, including two cyclones we've had pass through. We've had 85% of our annual rainfall just in these first four and a half months, which has had a huge impact on the plants here in the garden. All of that moisture, all of that rain, it's causing mold, it's causing water damage, it's causing disease. And if you come down and take a look at my lettuces here, which I, I've been really, really happy with the lettuces, the water has just caused some of these plants just to completely drop dead. And then these, these outer leaves here, you know, whether that's water damage or a bit of mold, a bit of disease there, it has been really, really difficult. I've actually changed my method here of harvesting. We were picking the outer leaves of the lettuce. It was very time consuming and we have switched to the cut and come again method. We've been able to produce larger quantities of lettuce with a lot less work. However, more work has gone into seeding and sowing more beds of lettuce. So I've got this one here, this bed, we've, we've actually just done, finished our first cut on all of these. Down at the other end where we started, those have been regrowing for a couple of weeks. We've had so much rain, unfortunately we've lost a lot of lettuce. A lot of them are growing back, which is good. We'll get another cut off here. But I've got my next bed here ready to go. I've just done the first cut off here. A lot of these are looking really good. There's the odd one here and there that have just died. I've got another bed over here. I've got two more beds that I've just planted out. So we've increased the number of lettuce plants that we have here in the garden uh, just to make that process of harvesting much quicker and to compensate for the loss we've had in, in the lettuce bed. Another crop that's been really affected by the rain is the carrot. These carrots here, we've just started picking from this bed, we've just cleared out the last one. The carrots themselves are actually fantastic. Let me just see if I can grab one here. Nice. So we've actually got a really nice sized carrot but it's the tops it's the greens that have just got water damage and they're really weak it's made it a little bit tricky to do our bunches of carrots normally we kind of bunch them all up and put a rubber band around here but with the tops being so weak they kind of snap off and we've lost a few carrots we have just at our last market we've done another option of our carrots which is actually with the tops off and in bags and it went really well. I was worried that people were going to be put off by the bag but I really think that it's great to have another option where we don't need to keep the tops on. The carrots looked so clean and beautiful and they stayed really fresh in there. We're still able to take a beautiful carrot to the market. I think the celery here has been affected too. Look you can see all of this. There's a lot of these on the outside. Maybe that it's the low temperatures as well. We have already had one very kind of mild first frost here. So we'll see how we go with the celery. It, it, it should grow over winter. It should be able to withstand a couple of frosts. We'll probably need to put a cover 
over it as well. We did have a bed here of, I think it was turnips, and we ended up just clearing them out completely because they just, it's just been so rough here with all of the weather. Because I only work up here in the market garden part time, when I do have my allocated time to be up here and it's pouring with rain, it's made it really difficult to work. Something that is quite high on my priority list of things to purchase is some good wet weather gear. I've been getting wet socks and just, it just makes it really not enjoyable. Um, as it normally is when it's dry up here and you're working so getting some waterproof clothing and some decent gumboots um, with winter right in front of us I'm sure there is more wet weather to come. Along with all of this weather another major problem that we've been having has been the pests, the, the insects which have been just absolutely devastating these past few months. I've got a really unfortunate patch of turnips. Come and check this out. So even though we have these insect nets, maybe I didn't get them on early enough, we, we seem to have a real problem with the insects. So particularly here with these turnips, the leaves are just getting absolutely demolished. I'm not a hundred percent sure what exactly the insect is that's eating these guys. I know that we do have uh, the white fly, white butterfly or cabbage caterpillar, it's a little green caterpillar. The army worm as well which has been really bad in the lettuce. I had kale in this bed here actually and I and I pulled it all out. It was just absolutely covered in the white fly. It was completely holy. The leaves were looking like Swiss cheese. It was inedible. I removed that whole row and perhaps they've come over into this bed and it is the white fly in here eating my turnips. Because we're all spray free you know, I know spraying, you could do that, but we don't, we're not interested in spraying anything on our crops. It's really for us about managing the pests with the soil. So just continually working towards creating really healthy soil to host really healthy plants, have diversity in the garden to build up a natural immunity against the pests but um, it's quite challenging we're not quite there yet so the turnips and um, the spinach as well come and take a look at the spinach so here in the spinach bed I actually wasn't even able to take any of the spinach to my last market because almost every single leaf is just covered in holes. Flea beetle and aphids, the army worm, the white butterfly with its green cabbage caterpillar. It could be any any one of those pests in here. It could be all of them in here. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. I'm just going to... With winter coming, um, the temperatures dropping much lower should eliminate a lot of those pests. They tend to be really bad in spring and autumn. I'm hopeful that they're going to start to disappear a little bit as we get into these colder temperatures. Um, I've just got to make sure that I'm really vigilant with getting the covers over these crops and getting them put into the ground properly. There's one here that's actually just come out of the ground because of these really strong winds that we're having. Oh, and another one over there. So uh, just keeping these crops covered, keep flipping the beds, keep adding compost is what I'm trying to do to combat this insect damage. But it's really tricky. It's really tricky knowing, knowing what to do and just keep moving forward, keep planting things, keep flipping the beds. 
these insect nets that I've got they do work really well but I found that because we do have these really harsh conditions here really strong sun here really strong winds come up here they do get damaged quite easily and they end up getting ripped and getting little holes and they don't last me quite as long as I would like them to and it's a pretty big expense that we have here is, is these crop coverings. I just used the last of this insect net and I had to get some more and I've decided to go for a different kind of cover actually. I'll show you, I've just put it on a new planting that I did yesterday. So this is the new cover that I got. I just put this one on yesterday it is the micro climber cover I'll add a link to this product in the description box um, I am hopeful that this is going to last me a lot longer it is a stronger fabric it's actually got uh, some thermal qualities so it's going to be protecting against those frosts that we're going to we get a few frosts here in winter so it's going to offer some protection there, keep those guys a little bit warmer in there. And I'll see, I'll, I'll let you guys know how I like it compared to this one, which is the Biomaglia insect netting. And here I've got lettuce, more lettuce, and some Napa cabbages. First time growing these cabbages. These are all of our Salanova varieties of lettuce. They're a little bit more expensive than the regular lettuce varieties, but so far I am really loving them. The seed is really easy to work with, um, especially because we're growing much more of it now. It's nice to be able to cut down time on that process of sowing the seeds into the trays. So nice big seed, easy to work with and they cut they come again so it works well for that process and it's just a really nice lettuce i found it to be um, quite resilient quite resistant to all of these pressures that we've had of the weather and the insects they actually have done really well and yeah it, it, they're working really well for us so i can't remember what varieties were going off the top of my head I will put links in, I will put that information in the description box as to the lettuce varieties that we are growing. And I've got, actually I've got a whole lot more to say about the lettuce because that whole process has really changed since we last talked. We've changed the way we're cutting it, we've changed the way we're washing and packing it. I've got my wash and pack area is looking a lot different to when you would have last seen it but that's probably a whole another video that I'll do for you guys coming really soon. What's after insects? Weeds. Something that you will notice about this plot, they all have weed mat on them. Um, these were all flower beds and now as we get in, into the colder months we are transitioning them all into our lettuce, cabbages, We've got a few of our flowers still here, our Lysianthus, that we're going to try and overwinter. I've got some leeks, spring onions that I'm going to continue to plant here as we expand into this plot. The main reason that we've gone straight for the weed mat, mostly because this is a new area, so we knew there was going to be a lot of weed pressure from the existing weeds and grass that was here also a lot to do with time management here on the farm weeding the garden weeding the beds it takes a lot of our time so we've been focusing our efforts on the areas of the the garden that are mostly weed free i've noticed a huge improvement um, particularly on the far side of this garden in the number of weeds it doesn't take too long if we are really persistent and we you know keep taking those weeds out when I'm flipping these beds there's not a huge number of weeds in there in other areas of the garden it has really got away on us these beds you know they started off a bit weedy we didn't plant them and now they are super weedy 
to the point where it's actually just overwhelming to think about where to start here. We have talked about what we're going to do to try and fix the situation that is these first kind of four, five, six beds. And we are probably just going to drop all of this down, cover this with compost, cover this with the tarps, and give it some time. Because we don't have the time to be out here pulling all of these weeds, we need to do it in a way that is going to save us time and is going to work so that we can continue to work in this area. This area has gotten like this because things weren't growing very well. There was this, only a few things that we could grow in here really successfully, mostly our sunflowers. And with our season finishing now, we just haven't really found the right crop to put back in here. So we're going to try and address this really soon, give it a makeover. It was really overwhelming to look at this area and think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do here? You know, but on the flip side of that, there's things growing in here and that's always good. You know, like everybody always says that, you know, bare soil is the enemy. Well, at least the soil is not bare. There's a few things growing in here that are not really bad. They're not causing any harm to our other crops. We've got basil in here. We've got these rogue tomato plants trying to grow there's some cabbages in here you know it's it's not the worst thing to have areas of the garden that look like this it's not really spreading we've got a plan to address it hopefully it'll be a day's work and then it'll be a few months under a tarp and they'll be ready for us to get back into them and get planting on them again in the past few months we have actually started to finally work on our irrigation system for the first two years we've been watering everything just with the garden hose across the driveway from the shed watering everything by hand we've got a few sumi soakers which definitely helps but only really able to do one at a time it was a bit of a mission on those hot summer days we were spending a lot of time up here watering and it only started because we had a burst pipe down on the far end of the property and our neighbor actually saw it. He came over and um, he's of course got orchards and so he knew exactly what to do, how to fix it. So he came over and showed us how to fix it. And it was kind of like, oh, that was really easy because I thought I was gonna need a plumber. I did not even know where to start. So that kind of triggered us being able to take those next steps and from that far end of the property where we have the water, we have connected another uh, inch pipe. We've run it all the way up the fence line here. It has gone under the grass across to the edge of the garden here. Having this bigger hose pipe bring water to the garden has really improved the situation here. We're able to get much better water pressure. Still got quite a bit of work here to do. What I really want to do is get this hose running down the middle here underground and get those hydrant ports where I can just plug the sumi soakers directly in. I can have multiple soakers going at once with the full pressure that they need to get a good range on them. But um, it's, it's coming along, it's underway, and I know I have a pretty good idea of what needs to happen next. It feels good to be able to start a project that we've been thinking about for two years and saying, oh, we need to do this, we need to do this, not knowing where to start. Now it's started, we know what we need to do next. So I'd say probably by this time next year, this will all be able to be watered really efficiently, effectively on those hot summer days when we do need to be up here watering probably twice a day. So that's something that's, that we've been working on. A lot more to do, but it's a really, really good start. Recently, we did have this hose here, this water outlet here installed, and I got the blue gun, and this has made such a big difference in washing the veggies. I'm still doing it here on my, my little pallet. Um, 
but the veggies are significantly cleaner because we've got the big thick hose pipe we're able to get a lot better pressure than just with the standard garden hose it works really well really exciting a really good investment we've had water installed in here and with um, a huge team effort with my dad and my uncle as well helped build all of this so we've got the bubbler it's not set up right now we'll do a whole nother video and I'll show you guys exactly how it all works but we've got the bubbler we've got the spinner I've got my drying rack set up and I've got an area here where I can weigh things and bag them up and then they just go right across here into the cooler so this whole wash and pack room is working really really well which is a big upgrade from when you last would have seen it and something else we have just started is the microgreens I've got these ones here which have just been unstacked we've been doing pea shoots we've been doing radishes we did a couple of experiments with some other varieties uh, mustard and mescaline the radish is my favorite so far i'm loving the pea shoots i do want to transition these to be out in the field but that's new and there's probably a lot more to say about the microgreens but i'm gonna do a whole video on that for you guys um yeah over the past three and a half months, I have faced some pretty significant personal challenges as well as challenges in continuing the operations of the farm. And even though it's been really, really difficult, I'm really proud of the fact that we have still managed to go and regularly attend our local market. The support from people at our local market has been really incredible when people start asking questions about where this has grown and did I grow it myself and it's spray free and they get excited about it and they're really interested in the product you have and they like buying it it's it helps me know that I'm doing the right thing that I'm in the right place it motivates me to keep doing what I'm doing and sometimes you need that you need to know when it's time to take a break, take a step back, and when it's time to carry on and keep going. I know that some of you will have noticed that I've disappeared off the channel the past few months and have asked questions or have offered your support. And I wanna say a big thank you to those people. Also to all of the new subscribers that have joined the channel. Your support, it means so much to me and I really do want to continue to make videos on a bit more of a regular basis. So I will see you guys again very soon. If you like this video, you like what we're doing, you wanna see more, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a lot and I will see you in the next video. Bye.